What we're going to look at now is how we can bring together graphs in the Cartesian plane, equations and tables of value, how they can all tell exactly the same story. So let's have a look at this example. We've got an equation y is equal to x squared minus 5, and you've had lots of practice in filling in a table of values for that, so let's just do this example. So if we want to work out what the y value is that goes with x is equal to negative 3, well, what do we do? We say that we want to substitute negative 3 where there was an x in the equation. So we'll get negative 3 squared, subtract 5. So negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, so we get 9. And 9 minus 5 will give me 4. So we know that when our x value is negative 3, our y value is 4. I can go ahead now and plot that on the graph. I can see when I come across to an x value of negative 3, my y value must be 4. And so I will be able to plot a point over here, which shows that when I have an x value of negative 3, the y value is 4. OK, let's go a bit faster for the next one. Putting in x is equal to negative 2, We'll get negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4. 4 minus 5, it's going to give me negative 1. And we're going to plot that. So what we say is we've got this point here, right, which is an x value of negative 2 and a y value of negative 1. All right. The next one, uh, x is negative 1, we're going to get negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. 1 minus 5 gives me negative 4. So into the table I will put negative 4. And so what I have here is I need to plot on my graph this point here, which shows that when I've got an x value of negative 1, the y value is negative 4. All right, put in 0, we're going to get 0 minus 5, which is going to be negative 5. And so I can plot this point here. When my x value is 0, my y value is negative 5. OK, I want you to just quickly pause the video and fill in the values here for 1, 1 and a half, 2 and 3. OK, pause and try it now. All right, I'm not going to spend ages going over the very simple ones here. Um, if you put in 1, you should have got out 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. If you put in 2, you would have got 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. And if you put in 3, you would have got 9 minus 5, which is 4. And you could have plotted all of those very nicely onto the plane. So there's the value with x is 1, y is 4. Here, x is 2 and y is negative 1, and then when x is 3, you've got a y value up here of 4, right? x is 3 and y is 4. All right, the one I left out is the 1 and a half because it just takes a little bit more effort to work it out. Okay, so 1 and a half, you know 1 and a half is 3 over 2, right? So we're going to put in place 3 over 2 squared minus 5. That gives me 9 over 4 minus 5. Ooh, now I've got to remember all my fraction stuff. So common denominator of 4, because 5 is just 5 over 1. So this will be 20 over 4. So I get here negative 11 over 4. And negative 11 over 4, well, 4 goes into 11. It goes in twice. So it's, about, it's minus 2 and 3 quarters. And so what I have is that when I've got an x value of 1 and a half, I have a y value that's approximately here, 2 and negative 2 and 3 quarters. So I will plot a point there. So you can see when x is 1 and a half, we'll have a y value of negative 2 and 3 quarters. Okay, let's just throw that into the table as well. 
negative two and three quarters. Now, let me just explain something. I really only put this thing in here because I wanted to show you that you obviously don't only have to plot points. You don't. You can plot points for fractions, decimals, the whole lot. The reason why we tend to stick to simple numbers like negative three, negative two, negative one, one, two, etc., is because it's easier to work out the answers, right? You can see it was a little bit more effort to work it out once we had fra fractions involved. But you certainly can do plenty of work plotting points where there are fractions involved, right? Doesn't make any difference. Okay. All right, so now we've got all those points plotted. And in fact, what we can do is we can try and join them up with a nice smooth curve. And this is where I'm really bad at drawing, so you'll just have to excuse me. The curve, if you could draw it nicely and smoothly, would be a bit better than that. But that's roughly what that curve would look like. And now what you can see is you've got information about the, in three different forms. So, for example, if I said to you, what is the x value? When you have an x value of 0, what will the corresponding y value be? Well, I can read it off straight away from the table, right? In this, you'll have when x is 0, your y value is negative 5. But even if I didn't have this table at all, I could read it off the graph because I can see when I'm looking at an x value of 0, the y value, it's this blue point down here, the y value is negative 5. And if I didn't have the graph and I didn't have the table, but I just had this little equation here and they asked me, what's the y value when the x value is 0? What I do is I would substitute in the x value of 0 into here, and I'd be able to work out that y is equal to negative 5. So simple as that, right? I can then, for example, ask you to read off the graph, right? When I've got a y value of 4, what is the x value? Well, y values of 4 are here, right? So on this graph, when I've got a y value of 4, the x value that goes with it, I can see is 3. And in fact, I can read it off here too. When a y value is 4, a corresponding x value is 3. And I can see it here in the table. When I've got a y value of 4, the x value is 3. When I've got a y value of 4, the x value is negative 3. Can you see that the graph and the table and the equation are giving us the same information just in different forms. And you need to be able to read back and forth between all those forms.